Hey folks, how you doing? Papa Joe here. I, uh, sitting up here on the old Rocky Top, Tennessee. No, not literally, figuratively speaking. I am in Tennessee and I am up on top of some hill. Out in the middle of nowhere. Have very little internet or phone service. So I'm taking a little bit of time making a few videos. Uh, this one is going to deal with a phone conversation last night. One of my subscribers, Jim, shout out to you, Jim. He uh, wound up by accident watching one of my Christian videos. He was honest about it. Said he likes watching my daily updates and my trucking videos. But he really didn't watch my Christian videos till one of them came across and he wound up watching it. Uh, it happened to be one where I was talking about losing my son and whatnot. Which touched him because he's got two boys. And, of course, they're very dear to him. A couple of things I'd said in there kind of got his attention. And he wanted me to meet a Christian friend of his. A guy named Paul. I'll say, I'm giving you a shout-out, Paul. So the uh, three of us last night had a pretty long conversation, a couple hours worth. Uh, Jim... I gave him a little dose of hard love. As y'all know, I don't sugarcoat very well. And uh, I just, I'm me. And sometimes I'm a little harder than folks think I should be. But Jim talked to me today, so I guess I didn't hurt his feelings too bad. He uh, is under the misunderstanding that a lot of people are on what it is to come to the Lord. So I'm going to touch on some of that tonight. And I am going to use parts of our conversation as examples. Uh, and it's been a long, stressful day, so I'll probably pause this a few times and have a cigarette. <coughs> now... First off, Jim watched my video and he started misquoting me on parts of it. And that agitates me. Folks, if you're going to watch somebody's video, you really need to concentrate on listening to what they are saying. Not what you think they should say. But when you listen to what you think they should say, you start hearing in your head what you're saying and not what they're saying. And uh, I tried correcting him a couple of times and he wasn't listening and I busted his chops a time or two and said, no, quit putting me in a, a box and misquoting me. What he was misquoting me on is uh, he said that I had said that the devil took my son because of my past sins. Folks, I've never said that. And I tried to explain to him more than once. No, what I said was that the devil was trying to drive a wedge between me and God. I was getting into my walk with God I was doing good, I was enjoying it, I was learning, I was fellowshipping, I was worshiping, I was walking a good walk with the Lord, and that makes the devil mad. And he will use any and everything he can to throw against you and between you and God to try to separate you two. And he had tried several different ploys that had not worked. And his last-ditch effort was to take my son. 
and he took my son by having him killed in an accident with a preacher and a deacon. No, I didn't get mad at the preacher and the deacon. No, I didn't get mad at God. But my heart was ripped out. My head was about to explode. It did not work to drive the wedge between me and God because out of all of that, I learned that there are some things that even this old strong hillbilly cannot shoulder himself. I had to lay it at God's feet. I had to let Jesus carry that burden. They had to carry me through those difficult times because I couldn't handle it. I was going plum nuts. I couldn't handle it. Worst thing to have to any parent is to have to bury a child. And I told him repeatedly last night that no, the devil did not take my son because of my sins. That's what he kept tripping on last night was he was afraid the devil would take one of his sons because of his past sins. And I said, that is not what I said. So, uh, and I don't want anybody to think that. No, the devil took my son trying to separate me from the Father. Period. And it didn't work. It did not work. Uh, he's also under the misconception that he has heard of people, and I commented in one of my videos where the good Lord has given me one vision in my life, and he knows someone else that had got a vision. Uh, so he was under the impression that you must get some kind of sign or a vision from God before you can come over to God. No. That is not how it works. That is not required. That happens to very few people. With me... The sign that I got, the vision that I got, was during the time of losing my son, when I was about to go totally crazy. My son had been trying to claim to be an atheist. He was trying to explain away God like a lot of people do these days. And yes, I was overly concerned if my son was with God or not. And yes, God gave me a briefest flash and showed me my son standing between two bright lights with this silly grin that he was known to have and giving me the old thumbs up. He used to give the old double thumbs up, which I hadn't even been thinking about. And it happened that quick or quicker. It's the only vision I've ever had. And God gave me that vision to allow me to know that he has my son. I know. There's a lot of y'all out there that think I'm crazy. There's a lot of you out there that's going to say it was my head that made this happen to give me peace of mind. Whatever y'all want to say, say it. Keep it to yourself. Because you know what? Nobody will ever convince me that it was anything but the good Lord giving me peace of mind that he's got my son. Period. You'll never convince me of it. No, I don't go telling a lot of people about it because I know how mankind is, especially in this day and age. And I really don't want to hear anybody else's opinion on it. That was between me and God, and I thank him. Thank you, Lord. I thank him. I'll forever thank him for giving me that peace of mind. Did it take away the hurt of losing my son? No, it did not. Does it still hurt to lose my son, to have lost him? Yes, it does. But I know where he's at. That's a good thing. I know where he's at. So no, you don't have to get signs. You don't have to uh, get some of this crazy stuff that you hear uh, uh, a lot of preachers talk about. No, you don't have to. Jim's also under the impression that he must know the Bible. No, you don't. 
Well, I must know something about God. No, you don't. All you have to do to get Jesus in your life is have the desire. Have the want. And then you talk to God. He, Jim thinks that he has to clean himself up. Nope, you don't. And chances are, history has proven, you can't clean yourself up by yourself. Whatever your problems are, whatever your hang-ups are, whatever your habits are, whatever it is that you think is wrong with you, chances are you can't do it on your own. And even if you can do it on your own, you will never be able to clean yourself up good enough for God. There's only one person that can cleanse you good enough for God. And that's Jesus Christ. I know this don't make a lot of sense to folks, but this is just simple word of God from simple Papa Joe. I am a, a good example. I had some bad habits. Cussing, carrying on anger, mad, going off on people, smoking pot, didn't really drink. I had my bad habits. And no, I'm not giving glory to, to the devil. I'm giving glory to God because I'm letting you know what God had to deal with. So I've had the same issues that a lot of y'all have. Now they might not be identical, but it can show you that we can relate. And I still had all them problems when I turned my life over to God. I did not worry about trying to clean me up because the song says, as I am. The Bible says he wanted me as I was. And I'm like, all right, if you want this mess, all right, Lord, here you go. Good luck to you, buddy. I hope you can do something with it because I ain't been able to do nothing with my life except make it a mess. And that's pretty much how I felt and thought. God started working on me. No, he didn't send no lightning bolts. No, he didn't change me overnight. But he started putting a desire and an urge in me to change my way of living. It started with my cussing. I found myself not cussing as much, and when I did cuss, it just didn't sound right. It didn't taste right. It, it just wasn't right. I found myself not getting angry so much. I had a bad temper. I really did. And I still have a small one, not like it was. And I found him changing my temper. Huh. As my temper changed, my outlook on life and on people changed. I got where I didn't hate the world the same. Before, I used to tell people that I had a death wish. And it ain't that I had a death wish. I just didn't care if I lived or not. Life had no real meaning to me. I was just going through the motions. I was just here, and if I die, I die. Big deal. It got where I started caring a little bit. I started being able to express myself to my wife and my children and let them know that I really did care about them that I did love them. I've often said that between my wife, my present wife, and God, they taught me how to love. Before them, I really didn't know how to love. Yeah, I'd been married and I had children. But I really didn't know how to love. I never grew up around it. It wasn't taught to me. I didn't see it growing up. 
And when I left that bad home that I was in growing up and went out into the world, I fell in with the wrong crowd and there wasn't no love there either. So I had had no real experience with love. And God taught me about love. My wife helped me learn about love. There is just, <coughs> excuse me, there has just been such a large difference in my life since Jesus came into my life. I didn't know the Bible. I knew a couple verses. In the beginning, there was God. And we all know 316, don't we? Didn't totally understand it, but I knew it. Other than that, I didn't know the Bible. Still don't. I'm no Bible scholar. I, uh, as I started walking with the Lord, I started getting a desire to learn the word. And in the beginning, when I would start reading it, it made no sense. No sense at all. That's when I was trying to do it on my own. Then I learned to, if I talked to God and asked him to help me, that he would. And then I could understand it better. I asked him for help with it. He started putting people in my life that did understand the Bible, that did know the Bible. And these were people that could hold a conversation with a simple hillbilly. And the Lord put it on me to talk with these people. And he put it in my head to make me to understand it. And that's how we've got these videos that I have made. I'm not smart. Yeah, I've got some college. Yeah, I got some experience. But when I talk to you as I'm talking to you now, he's the one that gives me the words. He's the one that gives me the knowledge. He's the one that gives me what wisdom that I have. This is all his glory. This is all for his glory, for his kingdom. It ain't me. I'm like y'all. I'm a simple working guy. I ain't been to no Bible college. I ain't been to no preaching school. I'm just a damned old truck driver that has found out he needs God. And it's just that simple. If you're wanting God in your life, if you want to see some real changes in your life, all you have to do is honestly talk to God and ask him to come into your life. Yes, it's that simple. You don't even need that little red button. All you got to do is have a mouth and a tongue and say, Lord, please help me. I want you in my life. Lord, I want you to straighten up this life that I have made a shambles out of. Lord, please come into my life and help me. Come show me your way. Help me to learn how to have faith. Help me to talk to you. Help me to live for you. Just talk to him, and he will. Now, talking last night with Jim and Brother Paul, uh, after the fact, Jim called me, and he had been thinking about what we had said, and uh, he said he started having a little word with God, and he was tripping on getting a sign. And we was trying to tell him, dude, don't trip on no signs. Don't worry about no signs. And he got a little sign. And he got excited. And I talked to him today. And I talked to him last night. He wanted to talk after he got that sign and we talked. And I told him today, I said, look, it's real simple. Do you know what the next step is? What's going to happen next? They said, no. What? I said, the devil is going to try to convince you 
that last night was a fabrication of your imagination. He's going to try to convince you that it never really happened. That it was all in your head. It was your imagination. That you was caught up in the moment. And he allowed the devil to already start trying to do that. I said, the, li the devil is a liar, a thief, and a murderer, a destroyer. He'll lie to you, and he will try to destroy your relationship with God. You've taken the first step last night talking to God. Do not let the devil steal that from you. If this is what you really want, you need to be talking to God today. While you're driving, talk to God today. Talk to him every day. And that's what you have to do, folks. And when you feel yourself being weak, Jim, anybody else? Start talking to God. If you're praying to God and talking to God and talking and praying is the same thing. You can be sitting here, driving down the road, watching the traffic, and you'd still be talking to God, and that's the same thing as praying. It is communicating. And if you will do that, then when the devil's trying to convince you that last night was a phony, that it was your imagination, you're saying, good Lord, I thank you for last night. Please chase this devil out of my truck. Chase him out of my mind. Chase him out of my life. Lord, I don't want the devil in my life no more. Jesus Christ died for me to whoop the devil's ass. He is a defeated foe. Run him out of my life. And if you're talking and praying to God, the devil will run. He is a defeated foe. Jesus done whooped him. Period. Yes, the devil rules the world because we allow him to. If you would talk to the good Lord, he'll help you out. He won't let that devil keep harassing you. And I'll tell you now, as your walk with the Lord keeps growing and growing, he's going to try everything he can to come between you and God. Just like he did me and most all other Christians. It is a fight. It is a battle. You have the upper hand. You've got him on your side. And if the Lord stands for us, who can stand against us? It's really that simple, folks. It really is. You don't have to know the Bible. You don't have to know any amount of verses. You don't have to get a sign. You don't have to get a message. You don't have to get nothing but humbled before the Lord. All you got to do is humble yourself and ask him, Lord, please come into my life and take over. Teach me and show me what I need to do to live a life for you. That easy. Y'all remember, God loves you and so do I. God's waiting on you. He's waiting on you right now. Say a simple prayer to him. Join me in a simple prayer if you would. I'll lead you in a little prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word tonight. Father, we thank you for giving us the internet, giving us inner tubes so that we can share your word. Lord, we thank you for sending your son for us. We thank you for giving us a way to you through him. Lord, as we approach this Christmas time, Lord, help us to know that this Christmas and every Christmas is about your gift to mankind. That your gift to mankind was your son. That you sent your son down here as the sacrifice, as the lamb, so that he could pave the way for us to come join you. Father, anybody that's praying with me right now, Lord, I ask that you reach down and touch them. I ask that you give them 
the will, the desire, the knowledge, and the wisdom to help them to come to you, to help you help them to live a life for you. Lord, please use this video to your good, to your kingdom. These things we ask in the precious name of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Folks, it's that simple. I hope you get on a good walk with the Lord. Y'all have a Merry Christmas. God loves you and so do I. Good night.